GSM GS Stormy Edition It's uh, very windy here around my studio Okay What are we going to do today? Well Last time, last week the video was about the history of computer chess so today we have sort of a follow-up video to that where I will talk a little bit about what's going on today with the chess computers and how these servants that we have these genius helpers can sometimes naughty and deceive us can you hear the wind outside that's right sometimes our silicon servants they deceive us uh -oh. so what can you do about it and in what way can they give us bad advice that is what this position and this video is about First, let's mention our sponsor that uh, made this video possible. It's sponsored by Babbel. And if you're a regular on the channel, you'll know that I've been working uh, with Babbel for some time now. And that's just because I'm really happy with their product and uh, our collaboration. So, what is your New Year's resolution? Mine is to take the downtime I have on my commute and use it to learn a new skill. And I found that the best way to do that is just to learn a new language with Babbel. Here is an example. Estoy soltero. Estoy soltero. I just can't wait to go to Spain. One of the things that made me really like Babbel is that it has a personal touch. The stuff you learn is not just vocabulary and grammar, it's also slang, it's culture, so you get a sense of where the language comes from. I really like it. Viewers of ASMR Chess, that means you guys, can get up to 65% off on a Babbel subscription by following the link in the description. Okay. Okay. So what is it about this position? And what is it about those sly silicon bastards that we use to analyze our games? Why can't they always be trusted? First of all, uh, if you are in doubt, trust the computer. They are superhumanly strong. But there are situations where they misevaluate what's going on. And uh, it can be very, very interesting to see and investigate and find out what is it that they miss and what is the truth of a position. So, what is this position we have here? Well, with white, we have your favorite player in the whole world. It's uh, Gary Carlson. <laughs> no, it's just uh, it's just your friendly uh, neighborhood ASMR chess. It's me with the white pieces here. And I found myself in this position on my move. It's white to move against uh, an opponent rated about 2,000. And uh, you can see, let's just talk a little bit about what's going on here. Uh, the position is very dynamic. Uh, but on the material side, we can see that I am actually down two pawns. You can see uh, I have lost three pawns from the start of like the game. 
my opponent has only lost one. These are some pawns that I have uh, game pitted or sacrificed slash plundered, <laughs> depending on how you look at it, in order to position my pieces so that they all point against black's king here. So you have these two knights trying to look down here. And you have this bishop also aligned towards the castle of the king. Both rooks are active. The queen is looking at the king as well. And I've been trying to gain some tempos, some tempi, as you may say, so that we still have uh, this rook in the corner not really participating that much. And this queen, very close to being part of the action, but not really part of the action yet. But of course my opponent, quite strong player, really has some positional trumps going on as well. Particularly these two knights in the center. You can see nicely supported by pawns. Uh, supported by another knight, supported by the bishop. This means that in addition to the material advantage that black enjoys here, being two pawns up, black also has a very strong grip on the center that I as white will have to sort of play around to, um, yeah, to get anything going. If you Put this position into Stockfish. Um, maybe not the newest edition. I haven't tried with the newest edition, but I was analyzing it with the premium ver premium version of, of Stockfish on Chess.com. And uh, if you don't know, Stockfish is uh, the best chess artificial intelligence uh, that we have access to. Uh, it's probably the strongest chess entity in the world. If you put this position in, it will say that black has a significant too large advantage. <laughs> I hope uh, I'll not... Uh, I hope this game will blow you away, but I hope that I'll not literally be blown away like the wind. I don't know if you can hear it, but <laughs> it's getting pretty serious. Um, okay, so it's white to move, and um, Stockfish says basically I'm close to losing. This knight here is attacked by the queen. If it goes back, it blocks this rook, and it can be maybe traded off. The other knight will come into the center. It can be, well, there's no attack. There's no compensation for the two pawns I'm down there. So what did I do? Well, of course, I, uh, I sacrificed the knight. Where did I sacrifice it? Here, on g6. Like so. Should I put it here? I'll put it outside. Them. Okay. And, um... When I input this move in Stockfish, it says, yeah, yeah, I saw that. Um, it is the best move you could play, but it's still uh, exactly as terrible as I told you it was. What should Black do while Stockfish is agreeing with my opponent? And I also agree that the only move that make any sense here is to capture the knight with the king one knight down but sacrificing a piece is that's we have to sacrifice more pieces or we have to at least uh, offer some more pieces so of course we go ahead and we sacrifice or maybe just offer this because there are some tactics with this that I'm going to break down here so, 
we are still following the game. Uh, Stockfish is also still following along and saying, yeah, 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 you are ripping apart the protection of the king, but you are so far behind the material, it's going to end uh, badly. Here, my opponent played a move that Stockfish does not like, but I liked very much because it meant I won the game. And I'll show you, first I'll just spend a little time showing you how the game ended. Ah, uh, but that's not really the important or interesting thing about this game or this position. What's interesting is what would have happened if we had followed Stockfish's recommendation if I had been playing Stockfish. So my opponent played Knight takes, which was what I hoped they would do, and also was pretty sure what they would do because I didn't really understand uh, Stockfish's idea, which is a different move that we will look, out, look on a little bit later. And um, what's going on here. Of course you can see that the king is exposed, but it's playing a very important role. It's protecting this knight so that I cannot just swoop in and capture it with the queen over the rook. Because it's the knight of course is also backed up by this rook. But here my sort of justification for doing these two captures of the pawns here with the knights giving up a lot of material was the idea of in this position playing this rook check rook to e6 check because now I can disrupt the communication between this knight and the rest of black's forces okay what do I mean by that well I mean that if you try to block like here or even here now I can actually swoop in with this check this cannot be taken since it's pinned to the king the rook is pinned to the king okay the same thing if you uh, block the check like this now the only try really is to go back here. If you go forwards, you expose yourself to the bishop and to other all sorts of nastiness. So you have to go back. Now this knight is no longer sufficiently protected and I can take it like this. I'll just show you the rest of the game here in order to avoid any really terrible uh, discovered checks. My opponent captured my rook. I captured with the check. My opponent steps back. I am still down material. Fine, that's okay. I'll just capture this bishop because it's, it's the last defender remember that this rook here not really participating in the battle so when this is recaptured which is what my opponent did incidentally or not incidentally but I just love to say that word incidentally uh, the best move is actually to just accept that you just lost this uh, bishop and offer this trade so I have to take take I can then move the bishop back and I will have a good winning game it's a winning end game but uh, my opponent just captured the bishop which gives a quicker and more stylish finish to the game and here it's important that I check with the rook my opponent played king h7 now, queen check, one move, king h8, and 
rook takes h6 and that is checkmate that's checkmate okay so that was how the game ended i looked at the game i was happy uh was very proud that my sacrifice worked out i got home blocked it into the computer put input all the moves and then things started to get interesting so let's uh, rewind to the original position i showed you and let's see what uh, stockfish has to say about all of this all right here we are and uh, i input this in stockfish uh, not even that wasn't even the the first analysis i actually did on the chess base program that utilizes more of my computer's resources than the internet version of stockfish um, but it's not the newest i have like stockfish 12. it's still a place like at a elo rating of like three three thousand six hundred or something so it's pretty good um, and I was a little sad to see that it felt that knight takes g6 although it actually said it is the best move that it is losing it is still losing white is losing here and uh, I was of course interested I wanted to analyze I wanted to find out how could my opponent have won this game what should my opponent have done? Stockfish agrees. King takes knight. Okay. Then I take here. It's the point of my sacrifice. Knight takes f5. Okay. And here it is. In, uh, in the game, if you remember, my opponent played knight takes knight which allowed rook e6, check, and uh, a winning game for black. But Stockfish says, no, no, black wins with rook takes f5. And when I looked at that, I was with most of these, when I analyze a game, with most of these, I don't look too deeply into uh, when Stockfish says something like this is plus two or whatever, or this is minus two in this instance. What I'll do is I'll look deep enough into it that I'll understand what the idea is. You know, I'll, I'll see what is the tactical or positional pattern that I missed. So I'll look like three, four moves, and then I'll get, you know, the gist of it. But here, first of all, I really wanted the sacrifice to work. And, you know, uh, of course, in life, we shouldn't go around uh, trying to will things into existence. We should rather work for them as best we can. But, uh, but it can also be an inspiration to pursue something you really dream about and I really I, I had dreams of being brilliant like Tal you know and and have made a brilliant sacrifice um, and it felt also the sacrifice felt very interesting to me and the further I looked the harder it was to understand why exactly this is losing and maybe it isn't if we look deep enough okay why do we want to take with the rook instead of the knight well the idea is that when you keep the knight here the knight protects e6 
that was my entry square in the other variation. So now I do not have rook e6 check, therefore I cannot chase the king away, therefore I cannot win anything on f5. So I have to attack this in a different way. And first thought, let's see if we can uh, just throw the kitchen sink in. And what, what happens if we just trade all the pieces, play the most forcing moves. So I input rook takes rook. And uh, now knight recaptures, of course. And now, after this knight has moved, we do have rook e6 check. But what's the problem? When we trade down, particularly when we are far behind in material, we make it easier for our opponent. And when we trade down in general, it makes it easier for the defending player. And one of the reasons that is, you can see here now, bishop f6. It's the only move, but according to Stockfish, this is winning. And the reason is, I traded off the rook on f1 that I needed to attack this knight. And I, you know, input all this stuff and I, you know, forced stockfish to look at it and in this position when I input this stockfish changed its mind and it went from being like minus two meaning like black has a very significant advantage to just saying white is winning 0, 0.0. In the blink of an eye, Stockfish apparently found an idea here that turned this whole crazy stuff into a draw. And I just had to figure out how is this a draw? Like we've been playing all the moves that Stockfish recommends for black. We've been playing the best defense, the most ambitious way that Stockfish can play with black. And Stockfish, until it reached this position, thought it was winning. And then, in the blink of an eye, like that, it says 0, 0.0, it's a draw. So what's the move? Have you ever heard this term? Pin and win? We have a pin here. The queen pins the knight. Do you know what we do about pinned pieces? We attack them. What's best to use when you attack a pinned piece? A pawn. So we play g4, attacking the knight. And so why is why is it a draw though? Why is it a draw? What is it's, it, I had to figure it out, and uh, I spent so much time looking at different variations and trying out different ideas, what if I do this for black, what if I do this for white, and uh, I just have to show you the, the solution, and then talk a little bit about um, yeah, computers and chess and how much we can tr trust them and how much we can't. What do we do here? There is only one move according to Stockfish and that is to protect the knight like this. This of course also attacks this rook but it's very dangerous to let go of the protection of this knight because the queen can swoop in with a check here and can be very, very, very deadly. So what is the idea here? Yeah, it took me 
some time to figure it out. But the idea here, the only move that appears to uh, to not lose, like I tried a bunch of different moves against, against stockfish here, and the only way I don't lose is by playing bishop takes knight. So what is that about? The bishop is recaptured. This pawn. That was why it took me so long to understand Black's idea here, this pawn here. It's a... Uh, it has a destiny. It has a... Uh, it has ambition. I was happy with this. I was like, I, I'll just go capture here. Let's check. Right? And you go back. And now I have these two pieces attacking. But then you face the problem that you have given up material. And even though this rook down here is still not participating, I don't have a checkmating attack by the looks of it. And if if I don't have a checkmating attack, then at some point black will get mobilized and I'll just have two pieces. And that's one of the problems with sacrificing. Maybe you know the feeling, maybe you watch an amazing ASMR chess video. Maybe you just watch an ASMR chess video, but it's about an amazing game that Michael Thal played. And you go online and you think, okay, I'll crush them. And you will sacrifice three pieces and then you'll lose. Because you need pieces to checkmate. And if you sacrifice too many, there's no checkmate. And I can't, like I can sacrifice with queen and rook. If I can get to the king, if I can play this as a check without this bishop being here, I can checkmate, I can uh, trap the king in the corner. But how do I do this? Okay, I need every single resource that I can possibly attack the king with. So I can throw Harry up the board here with h4. And the point is that I can now try to play g5. And these pawns are not, I'm not trying to win material. I'm actually trying to give up more material because I just want this bishop to move. You know, you can capture, capture, capture and just take these pawns. And But as soon as you move the bishop anywhere, 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 I gain access to g6, backed up by the rook. So now I'm looking at that, I'm looking at that idea, and I'm thinking, wait, how can, like what can black even do? This rook is not stopping this. No way. The queen is needed here to protect this, otherwise I just capture. So it can't, and it can't go here, just capture with the rook. How am I not just winning now? What is the resource that Stockfish apparently thinks that, that Black has? And the resource is this pawn. And the way to do it is to play d3. And what is that about? Is it about maybe when I play g5 that you can get out of dodge with a check so you win a tempo? Well, actually, no, because white just plays king g2 and now there's no stopping the queen infiltration. So that's not it. No. The point is that after g5 you play d2 whoops can now come here and make a 
queen. That would be a big problem. And it's still 0, 0.0. And there is a way. Like we've been walking a tightrope all this way. Like apparently I've been looking at this for some time. Looked at many variations. And apparently this main line here that we are discussing here is the only way for both sides to play. This is the only variation that doesn't lead that doesn't lead to a win for the other side. It's not it's not like at every uh, junction black hat ten different things. Uh, like almost at every move black hat one thing they could do and white for every move had exactly one thing I could do. And here I again I have one move. And it is to give up on checkmate. It is to capture like this. It's with a check. So there is no time to make a queen. But queen takes queen. And uh, it looks like white is done for. Because of course I can't capture with the rook. There comes a queen. But instead, check like that. It's check. Crucially it's check. Cannot be captured defended by the rook. So what do we do instead? We attack the rook. And do you see it now? How this somehow in some weird way became a draw. Where the rook takes d6. Like absolutely just in time. No tempo was unimportant. It had to be exactly like, like this. And now I can catch this. So if black queens, I can capture it. I will lose this pawn. If we take these two off the board, you can see that I am actually still up a pawn. So practically, uh, this end game is better for a white. But here it starts to be quite muddy. Uh, I have I've played like a hundred different games against the computer from this position, and um, the best I can manage is a is a draw when I allow myself to you know to take backs as much as I want and analyze as much as I want. Of course, if I just play vanilla against uh, stockfish, I just make a mistake at some point. And here it's a draw. Stockfish will usually try rook c8 going for this. You have to defend it like this and it's... You, you can see how this looks strawish, right? It's uh, There's not all this incredible dynamism. Apparently it was a sort of a math equation that turned itself into this rook end game. So, what does that tell us about computers? How we can trust them and how we can't trust them? Well, number one, if you have the time and energy, you can challenge a computer's evaluation. It will take you some time and you will almost always be wrong. And the computer will almost always be right. Or at least let me rephrase that. You will very, very, very rarely be able to prove the computer wrong. But remember that the computer is basically what doing what you are doing. It's calculating moves ahead. It's playing chess in a way that is kind of similar to what you are doing. It is not you know, looking up in the big book of chess truth 
and just see, okay, this position, this move is the best move, and I know this with 100% accuracy. Such a book does exist. It's called the Table Base. Uh, if you haven't already heard about it in, in the last video I did, but we only have those for positions with seven pieces or fewer. And you can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. We have thirteen pieces here. So very, very far away from a position where we would know the truth. So it is possible to challenge the silicon monster sometimes. And this is so complicated. There is, we know that there is a solution to this position here. And if you watch the uh, the computer chess history video, you'll know that we have found, with the table bases, we have found these positions that looks completely uh, drawish, like completely even, but turns out to be a forced checkmate in more than 500 moves and maybe it's actually pretty likely that this position is a forced checkmate for one of the sides but it's a forced checkmate in 800 moves or 1200 moves or something and stockfish doesn't know i don't know magnus carlson don't know and that is one of the most amazing and beautiful things about chess. Thank you so much for watching. I hope I will see you.